Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to dive into how to request shows under a press pass or trying to get that photo pass for a concert. I'm going to take you along with me for my process and how I do this. So I am actually doing this. I'm setting aside time today for me to go through and create my list of shows that I want to go to and put in my request. So this is exactly what I do, how to do it. I'm going to show you my emails, I'm going to show you my whole process, and just dive right into it. So let's do it! First kind of caveat before we dive into this is to talk about who this is for. So if you are shooting for yourself, like you are just trying to do your own portfolio and try and get images of big name bands for your own portfolio, this video is not really for you. This video is really if you have a publication that you're shooting for or some sort of press that you are doing something for the band. One thing that I see people do fairly often is reach out to some of these bigger bands and try and request to photograph a show when they're not really offering anything to the band. You kind of need to put yourself in the mindset of what are you offering? Are you giving the band publicity? Are you giving them images? Are you giving them a write-up? What are you doing for them? Because if you just send them an email saying, hey, I'm trying to add to my portfolio, that's great for you, but they're not going to do the work to get you there for you, if that makes sense. It's really good to think about this as what would be mutually beneficial. So what is good for me as well as what is good for the band. So for myself, I might get photos out of it and just something that I can add to my portfolio or I'm getting paid to go to this show. I'm getting paid for doing a write-up and having those photos. I might be just getting paid simply for the photos themselves. But then what is the band getting? Is the band getting publicity from that write-up? Are they getting photos from you? What are they getting? So think of it as what is mutually beneficial. That will help you get approved much more often if there is something for them in this situation. So keep that in mind. But what we are doing today is going to request as you have a publication that you are working with. This is the most common situation that I see and this is my situation and how I'm currently requesting shows. But say you're working with a local publication, an online blog, a magazine, maybe you created your own publication. Either way, you're requesting on behalf of yourself as the photographer and the publication that you work with. The other thing to be mindful of is make sure that you have approval to request these shows on behalf of the publication that you work with. There's a lot of publications that I know out there that do their own requesting. Someone else is in charge of that and that's not the photographers. So make sure that you are okay to send out your own emails before you ever send out emails. Make sure that you have that communication. In my case, I need to send the publication a list of shows that I want to cover and I get a yes, no on them and then I can send out my own requests. I really like this situation because then I can pick and choose who I want to go see, who I want to photograph, but at the same time I am the one in contact. So if I have any questions or there's any issues, I already have that contact with whoever approved me for the show on the band side that if something were to go wrong, I have that person to reach back out to. So I really like this situation, but I have to come up with my list of shows that I want to go see and we're going to do that right now. Okay, the first thing that I want to show you guys is my spreadsheet. Now, I've heard from a lot of photographers that they also have spreadsheets and I think that this is a really good way of keeping track what you do. It's one place for you to come back and reference who you've requested, whether or not you're approved to shoot them, 
um, the contact information that you can actually search within your own spreadsheet for contact information, which we'll get into in a second. But it is really nice to have everything in one place. This is just how I have mine formatted. So this first approved column is me asking my publication whether or not I am approved for that show. When they say yes, I just add a little checkbox and then I know that I am good to go for requesting that show. The rest of this we'll actually do together. So that's the date of the show, very important, the band, the location. The contact information, I have two columns here because sometimes you'll find contact information where you find a lot of options of people to reach out to. So I just give myself two columns to fill in whatever I need to here. And then this is really important for me to have a reason if denied. So if I just don't hear back from someone, I just say, you know, didn't hear back. Sometimes I'll get denied for a whole tour. So it'll be like, so-and-so does not allow photography this tour. That's really important for me because I request so many shows and I talk about so many different bands that sometimes I completely forget and I'll go back to request another show if they come to my city twice. And it's really important for me to put this in here because then I can reference it and be like, oh yeah, absolutely. They told me no already for whatever reason. And then I just have that and I can just check it off that I don't. I didn't request it. So really important to have that in there just for your own knowledge of why you should be requesting or why you shouldn't or what happened in that situation. And then I just have a checkbox here as once I requested it, I have it noted and we are all good to go. Hopping into actually finding shows to request, I often go to Ticketmaster because this is kind of a compilation of all of the shows in the area and it works really well for me to see what shows are going on but there might be a different board for you and your city that works really well other things that i do is like say i love photographing at the will turn i want to shoot more shows at the will turn then i'll go to the will turn themselves and click on their upcoming shows and look at their calendar and see if there's something that i want to photograph here so i often look at you know, specific venue calendars if I'm interested in a specific venue. But most of the time I am sitting here in this big master list of all of the shows in LA. I mostly look at specific date ranges. So let's say I'm looking at requesting out shows for uh, the 5th through the 17th. So I'll select those. And then I'll look through this list and figure out what shows I want to photograph. So do, 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 let's say I want to photograph and I'm scrolling, trying to find something I want. Okay. Maybe it is the Foo Fighters. So I will take this information and plug it into my list. So let's go over back to my list. I say Foo Fighters at BMO. So we say Foo Fighters at BMO. And then that is on Friday, August 9th. So that is what I first fill out and then I figure this out for my full week or time frame that I'm looking at and then we're going to dive into contact information. So I am going to dive into this whole list real quick and figure out what shows I want to photograph and then we'll come back. A few moments later. Okay, so we are back with our list of shows that we want to photograph. This list has already been deduped from my calendar. So I say this because this is very important. Make sure you are free for the days that you're requesting shows. There are often time shows that the approval comes in the day of, the day before. So I always want to ensure that I am available. So as I am putting this list together, I am checking it against my calendar to making sure that I am available those nights. 
So we have put together a list. These are the dates that I can attend shows. I will say there are a lot of dupes in here and I want to talk about that really quick. So you'll see that I have two Megadeth dates in here and then I also have all of these Olivia Rodrigo dates. I do this because sometimes, especially for like a bigger show like Olivia Rodrigo, that I give them the option of I can attend these dates. So whatever day you have a more open pit, you have less photographers there, I am letting the band's team decide when they can fit me in. Um, I just do it for a little bit of flexibility. That way I'm not picking a specific date and saying, hey, I need to be here at this one. Um, just because I'm not picky, I can let them pick and choose that. So we have our list. Um, as I said earlier, I have to get approval for this first. So you can see here that I have none of these checked off because I did not get these approved yet. So I will take this, copy and paste it into an email and send it out to my publication to make sure that I can request these shows. We're going to move forward like these were all approved, but I'm not going to check this off for the time being. But I will request these shows with my publication first before I send out any emails. Okay, now to the hard part, which is finding the contact information. Now, I always recommend you try and find the contact information on your own because most of the time, it's actually fairly easy to find. We're gonna use Olivia Rodrigo as an example, and I always just start off with a very basic Google search of the artists themselves. The reason for this is sometimes like on an Instagram, they'll have a link to who their contact is. And I'm not seeing anything here and then nothing on her YouTube either. So just a quick search wasn't bringing me up anything. So now we're gonna go to press contact and see what this brings up. And this brings up Chuff Media. And then also, great, look at this, Live Nation announcement. So there is a contact information here. You can see media contacts, let's click into this. So this is the press release that went out and let's see, we, okay, tour information, fantastic. Most of these are the days that I'm requesting. And then you see right here, media contact. So I am going to reach out to Haley because that is the person to reach out to for this tour. That's how easy this is. Most of the time you will be able to find these contacts by just a Google search, especially for these tour like notices. These are so easy to find. The bands, they want you to find these. They want to have that media contact out there so that true media can contact them. So you will often find these and find information from just a Google search. So I plead with all of you, please do a Google search first. It is very easy for the most part to find this information. Please, please, please. And again, all we did is type in the band name and press contact. And that's going to get you most of the time to this. So press contact or media contact will bring this up for you. And it was super easy. So now I'm going to have to go through and do that for all of these bands to make sure that I have the appropriate contact to reach out to when I submit my request. Okay, the other thing that I want to talk about when it comes to contacts is Facebook groups. These Facebook groups are fantastic if there's truly a contact that you cannot find by doing your own research. So what we just did, super important, but if you're struggling and you cannot find a contact, Facebook groups are really, really helpful because you have other people that are in the same situation that you are and they are also looking for media contacts. So I personally use two different Facebook groups. This one, which is Concert Photographers ISO <laughs> Contacts. This one and the Press Connect Music Media Networking Group, 
both fantastic groups for looking for contacts. I normally use this one because it is specifically about finding that contact information. You can see there's almost 10,000 people in this group as well. So one thing that I want to say about these groups is it's really important to use the search function before you post. And you'll see this in the about section of the group and some of the rules as well. But when you join a group and you're looking for, let's still use Olivia Rodrigo, say we could not find anything and we'd go to this group, we would go to the search bar over here and look up Olivia Rodrigo. We would see who has posted and who has shared the contact or who has asked about it before nine times out of ten you're going to find someone else who have already asked about that media contact you will find that take the email from there if someone answered or if no one answered and you're still not finding anything but there's other posts about it maybe comment on one of the posts and say hey did anyone ever find this contact it's a really easy way to search within the group itself find the information that you're looking for if there is nothing posted in the group already about that media contact or that band, you can go ahead and make a post asking for it. Now, I am not a group admin or moderator. I just use these groups to find the information that I need. So I have posted in these before asking for specific contacts as well as like looking into these contacts myself. So I think that these are very, very useful if you're looking for joining a Facebook group that can help you. But like I said, please use Google first. Okay, so now we are hopping to one of the most important parts of this whole thing, and that is requesting your shows. So say I got approved, I'm ready to put my email together to send out to that press contact. I have the press contact, I have the date, I have the approval, we are good to go, we gotta send out the email. So we put the email in here, and this is the template that I use for my emails. This is what I think works really well for me. It's short and sweet and to the point, and I absolutely love it. I almost always do band name in the subject, and then location and date, something like that. And I'll put a photo, like say photo request or media request or something like that. And then I have this information right away in the subject line. That way, whoever sees and gets my email, they know the date of the show that I'm requesting so they know whether or not it's urgent or like, you know, two weeks out or whatever it is, as well as like pretty much the whole information. They have everything really that they need right here. It's a photo request for what band, what date, what location. That's like the bread and butter of what you're sending out. But really important to have all of that in the subject line. That way it's just a little bit easier for whoever is getting your email to address it. I always put hi and then name, hope you're doing well. I try to customize this as much as possible. So I try to say something about like either the tour or something about the band that I'm photographing, or maybe it's someone that I've requested with before and I know them, I'll put something a little bit nicer and kinder here, but I, try to have something nice and personal instead of just hope you're doing well uh, because I think everyone hates the I hope this email finds you well but anyway put whatever you feel comfortable here or just feel free to delete that out of there I put I'm reaching out as I'm interested in photographing band on date I would be under assignment as a contributor for and then the publication and make sure you link here I think it's really important to showcase the publication that you are working with and what they can do so you can either link to other work of yours on their website or just their homepage but something to give whoever you are sending your email to a little bit more information about 
what this request is for, where it's going to be published, what it's going to look like when it is published. This is really important too if your publication requests that you do write-ups as well. So you can put in here, I would be under assignment as a contributor for this publication. I will post photos and a write-up. Whatever you want to add that like elaborates and shows off what you are actually doing for the band I think is very helpful here. I also normally put in my editor's name and email here. I do this because I want them to know that I am actually under assignment and that if we need approval from my editor then I can loop her in. But I don't want to clog up my editor's email inbox so I normally don't loop her in unless I absolutely have have to, but I put her name and email here in case they want to CC her and add her into the conversation if they need approval from her to show that I am truly on assignment. It is really helpful to add your editor's name and email, especially if their email address is the same URL as the website. So it could be like your editor's name at whatevermusicmag.com because if you're sending this request from your personal email, mine's just a Gmail, so it just doesn't show that there's that actual link there. So putting the editor's name in here and their email address, I just feel like it really validates what you're requesting. And if you want to go as far as CCing your editor, that's something that you and your editor should talk about, but I just add that information here. Then moving on, I say I would need one press pass and one entry ticket for the show. I normally say this as one entry ticket, and the reason for that is I don't need to stay for the whole show, especially for bigger bands. I don't need to be there the whole time. I just need to make sure that I can get in. So say I don't need a ticket to actually get into the venue, say I get escorted in, then they just need to give me a photo pass. Like whatever works for them, this phrasing I've used and it seems to communicate that whatever works for them to get me into the show is what I need. So. If you absolutely need to stay for the whole show for your write-up, you should say like one photo pass plus ticket for the show. I say entry ticket just because I need to get in. I don't really care about like staying there the whole time. So that's why I phrased it this way. And then I say, please let me know if we could set this up. Thank you in advance. I often go back to my my little list here and say these are the shows that I want to go to and I copy and paste this in here just so that there it is really clear what date what day of the week what show I am talking about and it's also really important that if I'm requesting one of these dates I could say um, I am available for all of the Los Angeles dates below. Um, obviously I'm not typing this out very well, but you can say like, please let me know which date works best for you. I only need to attend one date. And then you can put that in there and then they can pick and choose. So I often put a lot of this like copy and paste details in my email just because I find it really easy and really like clear of what date and what show I'm going to be at. And the last thing that I want to say about sending out these emails is do so roughly two weeks before the show. I always try and shoot for that two week range and then I follow up roughly three to four days before a show if I haven't heard back. Two weeks gives them plenty of time to plan for it. Um, they're normally starting to think about that show and really get into it. But on these tours, there's so many dates, there's so many things going on. If you request too far in advance, it'll definitely get lost in the shuffle. So I try and shoot for that two weeks where I send out my initial email and then I follow up if I can. If there is a date that I really want to go to that is like in two days, I will request that sometimes, but I'll say like, I know that this is late. 
blah, blah, blah. Maybe I'll say something to, you know, I show that I understand that I am putting this request in late, make it a little more personal, but for the most part, I try and request out two weeks. Okay, so you sent out your emails, you hopefully got approved, and then that's kind of it. That's all you needed to get your press pass. Obviously, there's things that you need to do when you show up to pick up your press pass and photograph your show, but the research behind getting into these shows, finding which shows to go to, reaching out, you've done all of that. So you are good to go and hopefully you will get into the pit. So that is my process and I hope it was helpful for you to see the process as I go through it. I wish that I had someone send me like a copy of this email template and where they found their shows when I first started out because I was asking everyone trying to figure out how I would get into some of these shows and now I kind of have this process fine-tuned as this is how I do it. This is what works really well for me and my publication and hopefully this makes sense to you guys as well and it works out for you. So if you have any questions, like always, you can put them in the comments below. You can also DM me on Instagram. I often reply to my messages on Instagram. So hopefully we will chat soon. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video and I will see you in the pit. Thanks. Bye.